Taking care of your mental health is crucial for overall well-being. So we welcome back clinical psychologist Alexa Shear to provide us with five tips that you can incorporate into your daily routine to help you cope and maintain your own mental health. Welcome back. Thanks. What are these five tips? The first one would be, it's okay to not be okay. Mm. And this is thrown around a lot, and I'd like to clarify what it means, which is, again, as human beings, we are sometimes going to have difficult thoughts and feelings, and, and that's okay. We can't control that. If we could, we would never have difficult thoughts and feelings. So when you react to the difficult thoughts and feelings and you're not okay with it, what, it's unhelpful because then you just add extra difficult thoughts and feelings on top of something that's already hard. So by being okay with not being okay, it doesn't magically take the difficult experience away, but it at least helps you to not add extra difficulties on top of that. Um, when we can accept what we can't control, it allows us to then focus on what we can control, yes. which is how we react to the difficult thoughts and feelings. Okay, can I just ask you from a cognitive point of view, how do we put that into place? So I'm having difficult thoughts uh, about not feeling okay and I'm, I'm saying to myself, it's okay to not be okay. H how do I then deal with that cognitively? Mm -hmm. So we can't, we can't, I think there's a lot of pressure and this is where, again, nuance is important. We have a lot of pressure to just think positively. Mm. And that can end up becoming kind of a toxic positivity which isn't helpful. So again, it's normal to sometimes have a difficult thought and have a difficult feeling, especially if the situation is difficult. You can control how you react to the, the thought. So just because you're having the difficult thought, it's not about saying to yourself, oh, it's my fault for thinking this way. Why am I not thinking positively? Because again, we just get stuck judging something, but we can shift our, our perspective. So, okay, I'm acknowledging this difficult thought, but if it's not helpful for me to focus my attention on, it is then helpful to, to shift the focus of attention onto something that maybe is helpful. And that's where some p positive perspectives or, or more rational perspectives can be uh, shifted. We can shift our attention towards those. Thank you. Thank you so much for mm. that. What's number two? So the second thing is then, you know, controlling how we react to our, our difficult thoughts and feelings. It's important to let them out. It's hard, to, it's hard to shift perspective if we're keeping it all inside. When we let out what we're thinking and feeling, it gives us that ability to think, oh, this isn't necessarily a helpful thought or this thought is bringing my, my mood down. So by letting it out, it helps it to become more manageable. We can see it from a different perspective and then we can get to, to working on how to, to manage that. So there are so many different ways to try and express and let out our feelings. Exercise is a really helpful one in that regard. Um, but obviously direct ways, talking to someone that you trust and especially a counselor or a therapist therapist, having a space to be able to really open up and, and not have to deal alone with what you're feeling. When people don't let out their thoughts and feelings, it doesn't, they don't just disappear. And that's when people turn to substances and alcohol to numb or escape from these difficult thoughts and feelings. But the problem with that is that it's not sustainable and you often just again end up with extra difficult thoughts and feelings. I always explain it to clients as, as imagining if you had a pot on the stove. When you leave the lid on the pot, eventually everything starts to spit out and that's when you can get burnt. And that's the same with thoughts and feelings. When we don't let them out, it starts to take control of our behavior and that doesn't feel good. For us humans, we like to be in control. When you lift the lid of the pot and you say, you know, this is what I'm going through, whilst it can be intense, the steam doesn't stay steaming up. It, it steams up and then it simmers down and it's the same with our thoughts and feelings. I have to agree. I mean, I, 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 love, I love talk therapy. I love how much lighter one feels after speaking about what you're navigating. It's, um, if you haven't tried it, you've got to try it because it really does work. Thank you. Number three. So number three is then again, once you have acknowledged that you're not okay and maybe you have let it out, even if it's not to someone else, journaling, all, all of these kinds of ways, art, whatever it is, finding that way to express. And then tapping into a gentleness and a kindness and a patience with yourself. And this can be really hard for us. We, we so often automatically respond to others with a kindness or with a patience. If someone's not okay, you're not gonna suddenly turn towards them and be really harsh, but we do with ourselves. Often, 
completely out of our own awareness. And we need to learn to just pause and recognize if we, we're doing that to ourselves because when we're not okay, we tend to get distressed and then we push ourselves even harder. I've got to be okay. Why am I not okay? I should be this or I shouldn't be that. And it just adds shame and guilt and frustration, which are very difficult feelings on top of something that you're already struggling with. Absolutely. And it can be hard to, to find words of compassion or to find gentleness. And that's where listening to self, to Meditations can be helpful. Self-compassion meditations can be really helpful. Um, listening to the words that do feel true, you just can't get there yourself. Um, and speaks also to the concept, sorry, Alexa, mm. the concept of self-care, right? Like yes. it's also a, a term that's you know used so loosely, but to really care about yourself is exactly what you're talking about. To be gentle and kind yeah. and compassionate. And it doesn't just have to look like pampering yourself. Obviously, those things are nice, but it doesn't have to just be spending money on yourself. It can be taking time to identify what do I need, what do I want, and just taking out a bit of time for yourself to meet your own needs as opposed to only ever prioritizing others' needs. And so whether it's meditation, a walk, a bath, or just, you know, identifying and getting someone to help you maybe to, to deal with all the things yes. that you're going on so that you just have a moment even for yourself. The fourth one is going back to the basics, you know, sleep, eating healthily, getting that exercise, those things don't underestimate how helpful those those tips are in, in terms of coping. They and then to health. Yeah, and then yeah. the last one, which again is most important, is get support. You don't have to deal with this alone. There's a lot of mental health. It might not always feel like it's accessible, but contacting the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, SADAG are there every day, 24 seven. And so reach out to a counselor, there's support groups, and there's always someone who wants to be there to listen to what you're going through and to help you access the support that you need. It's so wonderful knowing that SADC is around. Mental health is an ongoing process and everyone's journey is different. So find strategies that work best for maintaining and improving your mental health. We'll see you in a bit.